every magician, almost every magician, knows that you have good audiences and bad audiences. And good shows and bad shows, a lot of that has to do with how you're presented. Are you close to the audience, not separated by a big empty dance floor? Uh, is, are, is there enough light? Is the microphone working? Uh, can you go on shortly after dinner if you're a banquet act and not after an hour and a half of dead speeches and awards? And everybody's like this, and, they, and now here's the fun part, and you got to come out and wake them up if half of them already haven't left. But what happens when all the conditions are right, as best and professional as they can be? And uh, for example, example, in the casinos in um, Las Vegas, uh, the first show may be just fantastic, and the, and the performer kills. And the second show, you just can't get them going. They just sit there. But the next night, the first show is the dead one, and the second show kills. Now, why is that? Well, I remember Johnny Carson uh, on, his, on The Tonight Show was talking with Joey Bishop, another great entertainer, and they're talking about this very thing, about why is it that this happens? And uh, in our case, we say everything is the same. The, uh, the audience is, is packing the theater. We've got a great band playing the show. The lights are all perfect, the sound is all perfect, everything is the same, but why first show bad, second show good, and then vice versa. And so they, they start talking about, is it, the, is it a full moon? Is it ions in the air maybe? What, what could cause this to happen? And my thought is what I call the double six theory. Every audience is different, and uh, let's digress a minute. In gambling, arithmetic, takes a great part of that. Out of a thousand rolls of the dice, arithmetic says it's like 26 throws are gonna be double sixes, and another number are gonna be double ones and double fives, and then fours and threes and all that. And by law of averages, how often are you gonna get a double six? 26 out of a thousand times. Not necessarily out of a thousand, that's like out of a million. Every thousand and you average all of them together, they will average out to 26. In some a thousand, you may get 56 double sixes, and in the next thousand, you may get four double sixes. Now, if you think of a double six as an outgoing, a jovial, convivial person, uh, like an insurance salesman that has to have a personality and can sell, you know, compared to maybe a, a, an engineer that's just as brilliant or more, but he's just a little more of a quiet uh, person and not effusive and so on. Well, what happens on the nights on that first show where you kill, you've got all these double sixes, way more than 26 per thousand. And that show goes great. Say uh, when you entertain an insurance salesman's convention, that's probably the best audience you can get because everybody has, has got to be that way, a double six, or they can't sell insurance, right? They can't sell insurance like this. They've got to sell insurance. And so they're all out there and they're just having a good time and they laugh and, and everything. And then there's the night when there are just four or five double sixes, and you hear four or five ladies and men kind of laughing, but they just aren't enough out of a thousand to get the audience going. And, uh, and you sweat and you keep working. You hope you can finally break the ice and then get them going. Because I have started out on some shows where it's just terrible. Uh, I have this trick where I come on twirling a rope and it looks real and everything until the music stops and I stop, and it's a fake rope. And that's my audience tester. If they're a good audience and everything, they'll just laugh at that like I fool them with the fake rope and I know I'm in. And other nights I'll twirl and the big finish with the music, da da, and I stop. And there's just silence. And I'll put it aside, put my hat on it like a hat stand, and I know I've really got to go to work on this audience, you know. And you start off kind of slow, and finally, by the time you do the birdcage and you get the two ladies up and you start joking with them, then the ice starts to break and uh, and by halfway through, at some point, you burst the dam, and they're on your side, and they like you, and then it goes well. And then you supposedly get them in the palm of your hand, and you can play them like a harp. I mean, it's just, uh, you just have the timing and the experience there. And that's when it's really fun, when you've got an audience really going, and I'm after the laughs. You're doing good magic, but I'm after making them laugh, laugh, laugh for 45 minutes straight without, without any dull moments. And so if a joke doesn't get uh, you know, a good laugh, it, after a few times it goes out of the show. And then the funny thing will happen, and, uh, and boy, that stays in the act. So um, that, that's kind of all part of the game. And everybody's got to find that, that magic themselves 
to create to push across the footlights. I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs>